Hello, welcome back to the Spider's Web. And what we have currently in front of us is from Talisman the City expansion. We have the Bounty Hunter, as you can see from the title, the Bounty Hunter. This is the model, <coughs> and just to put it into a little bit of perspective, it is slightly smaller than the ones we have been doing. Okay, so I'm using this as a rough guide for colours because I like when we, when I can to do colours that are similar to the actual um, illustrations. So what we have is a lot of browns, dark greens, <coughs> and flesh colours. Let's start off with the flesh tones. And for that, we're going to be using Balor Brown. Let's get some of the Balor Brown onto our wet palette. Now, obviously, because this is a small miniature, we're not going to be um, using a lot of paint on this. But we're still going to be watering the paint down. As much as we can. So, first off, I want my kitchen towel. And we'll just go across. This has been primed as usual in grey. I've not done any. Um, brighter priming on this like I did with some other minis where I um, I did a white blast at the top is that my uh, some romantic ones I did I think I did them that way I'm not doing it with this because it's it's quite a, a small model so we're just going to go and get doing what we can with it rather than going into any great fuss over the pre preparation on these. So the idea is still to just cover the areas that we want in its given chosen colour. And in this one, we're doing all the flush areas in this Balor Brown. Um, the reason I'm doing this rather than carrying on with the um, with other projects that I have on the go, such as uh, my Space Hulk is because I promised um, Stephen Gilbert that I would do a video very soon showing how I applied um, the static grass. So this is the video when we get around to it where I do that. So I want to get it painted. I might as well show you how we choose to paint it. Um, I know I've not done all of the uh, talisman minis on camera because I've got talisman and um, before I actually started doing videos um, but from what I get now <coughs> other talisman games I get now I will be adding um, I will be doing videos of the painting that I do on this so I just realized I've gone off camera hope I haven't gone off too much <coughs> That is the reasoning behind the, the decision to do these minis. 
and I chose these minis because as I said they are smaller so there's a better chance of me being able to show you what I want to show you <clears throat> okay so that is a one piece sleeve glove type thing and now we can pick out his moustache Okay, laddie, okay, sure up. Laddie, enough, thank you. Laddie, enough, thank you. <laughs> and it's just a case of getting all the flesh areas identified and painted. Okay, once we've done that step, we'll let it dry before we do anything else. <clears throat> Next, we're going to be doing the trousers. Just to, just want to give that a chance to dry. And for that, the base coat is going to be Caliban Green. So I want this incredibly dark. There is not much in this pot of Caliban Green. I'm going to say Caliban Green then. There's not much in this pot of Caliban Green. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just hunt around for the paint inside it. <laughs> so, there we are. And we're just painting it on the cloth areas, not the um, armoured areas um, okay there are straps and various bits in here that aren't green but I think it might be just as easy paint this green and then go over and do the straps a little later um, it's not going to make any big difference to the finished look of the, the model it's just going to mean that we have to paint over some of the green at a later stage We'll be using a, <clears throat> a couple of different browns for that, so don't uh, so there's no need to be too, uh, shall we say, concerned about going over the um, the bits that shouldn't be green. At this stage it doesn't make any difference whether you do go over them or not because let's face it, this is just a base coat, it's not a final thing. It's uh, during the later stages of painting where we need to be more and more careful in what we're doing. Um, as I say at this stage, now we can get away with a little bit. Um, Okay, so we'll just go up there. And we'll leave the green parts at that. Okay. Now the flash areas should be done by now. And as such, what we're going to be doing now is using a very little used colour of mine, <laughs> Abaddon Black. <clears throat> now the Abaddon Black we're going to be using quite frequently on some of these, some of the models for this particular um, set but first off for this character we're going to be using it for her 
and the base coats for most of this area. So we have let's say a moustache to do here. And here's her. When I grow up, I want to be Freddie Mercury. In fact, I'm not going to do the uh, base coat for the armor um, with this color. I'm going to do what I usually do and use the Warplot Bronze. Which I don't really want to use a lot of black in this. Oops. At some point, I will be trying to find out what the best way of painting on camera is which will allow me to have everything on camera that I'm showing you rather than going off camera um, Everything that I want to try, I do believe it is. So, in fact, no, what I'm going to use this black for as well is the discovered for his sword. And you can see occasionally when I've hit this stick it's a it's a soft plastic it's not very it's not a hard plastic so it will bend This hopefully is going to be good enough to be uh, used without having to keep going over and over and over. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because I don't want this to look um, really nice and new and I want it looking a little bit grotty. I think actually that is leather rather than uh, metal. So what I think might be an idea is instead of using Warplot Bronze, we we'll use... I'm taking out the Warplot Bronze anyway because I will need it. Uh, let us use... I don't want Dryad Bark. I want the other one. Where are you? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. We're wanting... So brown colour, which is going to be Rhinox Hide. Now, this is a very quite a reddish brown colour, but we want quite a bit of this. There's quite a bit of leather armour on this model. Um, there's going to be some metal areas. Nice as well. 
But let's just concentrate on the leather aspects first, shall we? Um, he says going straight over metal but in fact we're going to be going over a lot of metal with this because um, this seems to be leather armor um, which has metallic studs embedded in it so there will be a lot of um, metal added to this later all them lumpy bits in this uh, metallic studs so that's it we're not bothered about going over um, with this brown it might add to it anyway it's the proper base coat to work to Mm -hmm. And here we go. A little bit of water on the brush because it's not quite as wet as I would like it. So we're going over everything. We'll go over everything here. Um, the leather, all the metallic stuff. Um, now, let's try and get this looking a little like it should. Let's get it stuck to this lid. Going to droop off a little bit. Can't be having that. Um, So all the straps that we can do now in the brown. Might have to change brushes in a bit to get to the really fine ones. Um, but that isn't a, any big deal to be honest. You would normally find that you don't use one brush when you're painting anyway, so we should really be swapping and changing brushes. The right brush for the right job. If you're lucky, you can get a brush that is such a, a good point, even though it's a thick brush, that uh, you don't need to um, what do you call it? Um, you don't need to change brushes, but fortunately, this one is a little bit worn now. We're just going to go all over everywhere. Might as well. Um, is there anything that's going to be metallic? We'll go over later on. I'm just going to do a quick. more so of a wash with this colour than anything else where the metallic parts are I 
that's because we'll be we just want it sinking into the crevices rather than lying on top because we're going to be using wall pot bronze to um, that's going to provide the base coat for the metallics and so I'm looking all the time at the um, excuse me I'm looking all the time at the uh, illustration to see where things are and what things are um, sometimes find that helps um, I think, I'm sure I must have said it in other um, videos that if I've got doing a game piece and I'm looking under a specific pictures of the characters I try to go along with that because it looks better if you've got your game there and you've got your um, what we call it you've got your game piece you've got your picture well you've got your card um, you've got your character card you've got your picture on it if I do it if I paint it the same or as similar as I can to the actual picture on the character card it's much easier to find and, ad and identify when it's on the table as it would be if I did it a completely different colour. So that's the reason um, I try to do that with certain things. Now I'm just going over all the strapping at the back of this model on the back of the legs um, and what you could also try and do is just give it a wash with a grax earth shader that would give the brown effect to also the shadows in this um, but I'm actually going for um, actual brown look to this rather than a wash I will be going over this a couple more times probably so I'll be doing that off camera like I did with the um, the drow figures that are not long since painted from Avatars of War um, as I say at the moment we're going over the straps and kind of what we what can loosely call laces for his boots I so I can loosely call them laces because they aren't actually well they don't seem to be tied they just seem to be there holding or gripping the um, the trousers So we have areas where it's going to be metallic as well. So I'll go all over everywhere with this brown, and then we can come back. Wait uh, with metallic stuff. Well, I'm not with the metallic paint. The base coat it properly and highlight. And tum 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 tum. And we have three um, expansion packs. That I'm going to be painting as yet. We have the um, city expansion, we have the uh, Firelands expansion, 
there are undercoated and we have the woodland expansion which I did an unboxing for um, was it last week or the week before um, so all those expansions are going to be painted and I mean really the painting videos that I'm doing um, Once you've seen one technique, really, you've, or once you've seen one, nine times off, then you've seen them all. But the reason I carry on doing them is because they're different models, and I just like doing these. If you get bored of them, let me know. I'll stop for a while. I can find I can get through them a lot quicker without having to. Uh, shoot the videos but I enjoy doing the videos for you so if, you'd, if you'd like me to hold off some at any time on painting videos then let me know and and a few of these lacy effects here that haven't been oh lacy effects the, the laces I haven't actually done yet and now I'm gonna just make a start on this staff I'll try to go for the easiest and the quickest looking model so I can actually do the the bit that I want to do this is not going to be in fact, none of these models of, uh, for Talisman are incredibly um, detailed and will take up a lot of time to paint. The majority of it is uh, waiting for washes and paints to dry. <coughs> but now he's had his base coat. <coughs> you can see now how things are looking. What we're now going to be doing is giving this a wash um, the flesh is going to be washed not with a brown colour it's going to be washed with when I can find it uh, is that it there? no but it is the one next to it <laughs> ok it is going to be washed with Reichland Flesh Shade <clears throat> so we'll just get, his, get the paint on and just I'll get the, the colour on and apply it we need to apply it fairly thickly not too thickly um, we don't want it pooling everywhere we want it pooling in the shadows and actually tinting the paint they're actually applying it to no point in putting on a wash and not being able to tell that you've done it there we are is done as you can see it's, it's dull and tinted the flesh tone a little bit better than it was next what we're going to be using is for the um, trousers when I can find it it's a problem, I put things back in my tub and I can't find what I've done with it. Let's see, it's not that one. There we are. And for the, the trousers, we're going to be using, surprisingly enough, 
peculiar green shade. I'm not going to be touching the browns, the brown areas, because they're quite dark. I just want to darken the other areas. And once I've applied this, we're going to have to leave this model and come back to it. In about an hour or so after the washes have been given sufficient time to dry. Because they do take a lot longer than the actual paints to dry, so you need to give them the time to dry. And when we come back, we can then start highlighting applying the proper and base coat effect to the metal areas and whatnot. So, so far that is all we can do. But we'll be back in a, in a little bit to continue. Okay, so I'll see you in a second. 